Let's make the pain visible. So how do we do that? Well, about eight years ago, I was working on this really great team. We were really disciplined with best practices, constantly working on improvements. But despite these things, I watched my project hit a wall. And by hit a wall, I mean we brought down production three times in a row and then didn't ship again for another year. That's hitting the wall. (laughs) So I thought the main obstacle was technical debt that was building up in the code base and causing us to make mistakes. So I built this tool that could detect high-risk changes in the code and let us know where we needed to do extra testing. But what I found wasn't what I expected at all. Most of our mistakes were actually in the most well-written parts of the code. It wasn't in the code that was full of technical debt. Most of our mistakes were written in the code in the code with our most senior engineers wrote. And so at first I didn't really know what to do with that. And so I started digging around in the data and the correlation I did find was this. We made significantly more mistakes in the code that we didn't write ourselves. And while that made some sense, lower familiarity increasing the likelihood of mistakes, I couldn't help but think there had to be more than to the story than this. I mean, this is what I knew. When I had to work with complex code, it was really painful. But what makes development actually feel painful? And so I started keeping track of my painful interaction with the code and visualizing it on a timeline like this. So the pain started when I ran into some unexpected behavior and ended when the problem was resolved. So this is five hours and 18 minutes of troubleshooting. Would most of you agree that's pretty painful? So the amount of pain was driven by two factors, the likeliness of unexpected behavior and the cost to troubleshoot and repair the problems. And so if I wanted to understand what was causing this pain, I needed to understand the things that were causing these two factors. And so I started breaking down the problems into categories. And what I found was really interesting. I realized that most of my pain was actually caused by human factors as opposed to problems in the code. For example, stale memory mistakes. So this is when I have an idea in my head about how the code should work, but it doesn't work that way anymore because somebody changed it. Or ambiguous clues. This is when you're running an experiment and there's multiple possibilities for how behavior can occur, and you make a bad assumption and down the rabbit hole you go, troubleshooting for hours. So these aren't really problems with the code itself, Pain is a consequence of how we interact with the code. So pain occurs during this process of understanding and extending the software. And so I started optimizing for what I call idea flow, or this flow of ideas between the developer and the software, rather than optimizing the code itself. And I did that with the help of a data-driven feedback loop. So in my project, we ended up spending tons of time working on improvements that didn't make much difference for almost a year. And we had tons of automation, but the automation didn't catch our bugs. And we had well-modularized code, but it was still extremely time-consuming to troubleshoot the defects. And then we started asking, what are the specific problems that are causing the team's pain? And that's when everything changed, and we were finally able to turn the project around. And I learned one of the most valuable lessons of my career. The hard part isn't solving the problems, it's identifying the right problems to solve. 